pick up with uh, functions and relations here. Uh, we have defined a relation as a set of ordered pairs, but it can also be defined as a figure, as a graph. I don't have an example of a graph yet. I'll show you that soon. And also as an equation. Of course, when we have an equation, we have a graph. Uh, the examples here that I have is determine if the relation defines y as a function of x. Well, based on the definition, this is a set of three ordered pairs. These are the x's and these are the y's in the two sets. The set would be 2, 4, 3, 4, and 8, 4. And even though the y values are the same, the x values are all different. So yes, this is a function. On the other hand, if I go to uh, try to determine if this is a function, because it's the equation, I probably would help myself a little bit with a, qu a quick graph here. So if I pick some values x and y, and I know a little bit about absolute value. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to plug in y values to go with the x. So let's plug in, for example, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Let's make this a little bit more. 0, 1, and 2. That should be plenty. If I plug negative 3 in, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. If I plug negative 2 in, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. If I plug negative 1 in, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. If I plug 0 in, 0 plus 1 is 1, absolute value is 1. Plug 1 in, I'm going to get 2. Plug 2 in, I'm going to get 3. Well, I can see right away that I have some ordered pairs that have the same x and they have different y values, just in the few points that I've found here in my t-chart. So if I was to try to sketch this out, and I'm not going to do a great sketch, I'm going to kind of freehand it, which is something I tell my students not to do, on their assignments that they turn into me. But I'm going to kind of freehand it all the way. Anyway, I should say. I'm going to graph negative 2, positive 3. That's up here. Or excuse me, got that backward. Positive 2, negative 3. Positive 2, negative 3 down here. Let's get them right. Negative 1, or excuse me, positive 1, negative 2. Positive 1, negative 2. 0, negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 2. I'm going to get kind of a weird looking kind of sideway V shape here. And you can see it fails the vertical line test. So no, this one is not a function. It's a relation, not a function. Now on this one, from the last uh, section that we studied about circles, this is the equation of a circle with center at 0, 0, and radius at uh, 5. But we know what a circle looks like. A circle is, is clearly going to fail the, uh, the vertical line test. In fact, if my center is 0, 0, and my radius here is 5, you can see it would fail the vertical line test right away. I can kind of see that one coming. So no, this one is no as well. All right, so the first one was, the other two were not. Now, as I mentioned, when we have a... Um, a relation, and we're trying to determine it's a function, we look for the idea that every x is used one time. Now, when we write uh, functions out, it has a kind of a special notation, and I'll try to explain why with this next example here. It says y equals 2x plus 1 is a function, and it is. It's a linear function, degree 1. Uh, for the x and for the y. This is a linear function. The graph is a line. We're going to spend a lot more time graphing lines in just a bit. And I want to plug 0 in and find the y value that goes with it. I want to plug uh, 2 in for x and find the y value that goes with it. So if I plug 0 in, 2 times 0 plus 1, I get y is equal to 1. If I plug 2 in, I have y equals 2 times 2 plus 1. I have y is equal to 5. Now, if I just look at this and just look at this, I have the y values, but I'd have to kind of go back to the original problem to determine all right, which x values correspond to those y values. Now, sometimes what they'll do is when they ask you to plug in y, or uh, find y when x is a particular value, like in this case x was 0, they sometimes write it like this. x equals 0 is 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then you can kind of tell, but that's a little bit awkward. Instead, we're going to replace the y, back to the original here, we're going to replace the y 
with this notation, which is read f of x. And f of x, it's not f times x, it's f of x, is equal to 2x plus 1. So all I do is replace the y with f of x. y is equal to f of x. And now if I want to find these values, I write it this way, because x is 0. That's what I wanted to do here, x is 0. So that's 2 times 0 plus 1, that's 1. I can tell not only what the y value is, but what the x value is. That's pretty convenient. If I do the same thing here, by plugging 2 in for x, I have 2 times 2 plus 1. So f of 2 is 5. And again, I have the x value and the y value. I can write it as an ordered pair, just like I can write this one as an ordered pair. The, the advantage here is that y is used all the time as one of the, one of the uh, variables, the dependent variable, but with a function, you can name this equation f of x or g of x. f is the name of the function. You change the letter to a g or an h or a k, and you have a different name of a function. And then you can tell, well, this function is f, and this function is g, and this function is h. So f is the name of the function. x is the input value, sometimes called the independent uh, input variable, or the independent variable. f of x, which is like your y value, is the function value that you get when you plug in an x. So we think of f of x as the dependent variable. Now, here's an example over to the side of using the function notation to evaluate at different values for x. This is saying, what is the y value when x is negative 3 of the function g of x equals 4x minus 3? So I just substitute it right in. Whatever this is, that goes in for the x in the rule. Whoops, minus. So that's negative 12 minus 3, which is negative 15. Here I plug negative 1 in. 4 times negative 1 minus 3. So that's negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. Here I'm plugging 0 in. So if I'm plugging 0 in graphically, I'm looking to see what the y-intercept is. So this is going to be 4 times 0 minus 3, or what the y-value of the y-intercept is, which is 0 minus 3, or negative 3. And if I plug 1 in, I have 4 times 1 minus 3, or 4 minus 3, which is 1. So as long as I'm plugging in a number in for x here, I just do the arithmetic defined by the rule for the function g. Now, one of my teachers explained plugging in something other than a number to me using the idea of what is g of chair. Now, of course, we're not going to plug a chair in for our variable. It wouldn't be part of the domain, most likely. But the idea is that whatever this is goes in for the x right here. So this would be equal to 4 times chair minus 3, which I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a sofa. I don't, I'm not sure. But the idea is what this goes in for the variable and the independent variable. Plug it in. And I'm saying that because of the next example where I'm plugging in values of x that are not numbers but variable expressions. Evaluate the function defined by f of x equals the opposite of x squared plus 4x for the given values of x. So it's asking for f of t. So I'm going to plug t in for my variable in both spots in my, in my rule here. I have the opposite of t squared plus 4 times t. Now I don't know what that equals because I'm not sure what value t is representing. But that's what f of t is equal to. Now this one is a plus h is being plugged in for x. So f of a plus h a plus h goes in here, and it goes in here. I have to be very careful with the exponent and with the opposite sign. So this is the opposite of a plus h, which is squared, plus 4 times a plus h. Now, I would not leave it uh, like this. It probably simplifies a little bit. I don't know if I'll have any like terms, but they would most likely expect for you to multiply it out. This would be the opposite of the quantity a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, squaring that binomial, plus a little distributive here, plus 4a plus 4h. And then if I get, uh, this is like a negative 1 here that I'm going to distribute by. So I take the opposite of this, whoops, whoops, I squared it. I don't need to write that down again. And I have the opposite of a squared minus 2ah, there's the square, plus h squared. So this would be minus h squared plus 4a plus 4h. Oops, 4h. There we go. And that's as far as that one's going to simplify. 
So be very careful when you're substituting in expressions in for the independent variable and be careful with your algebra.